Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to a beautiful day in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. And we're just at one of the local parks that we frequent. And as you can see here, I have a really long leash. This is a 50 foot long line. And I am using this with Magnus here today because he needs time to get out and sniff, right? So if you're a kind of person that doesn't get to, maybe they're training your dog and they don't get to go out very much. Maybe you don't have a backyard. Maybe you don't have a place where they can run freely. A long line is a fantastic option in order to get new smells, new sights in, and to just let your dog have fun. Now, if you're noticing while I'm doing this, I'm never, my goal with this line is to never let it get it tight. Okay, so as we're moving along here with Magnus, my goal is to always have it loose. So the entire point of these walks is to go at your dog's pace and learn from them. Now, as you're noticing, I am going to be paying attention to Magnus's body language as I'm talking to you guys. And to see where he's sniffing, what he's doing, and how he's responding to the environment is all very important information that really has deep roots in dog training. So if you're currently struggling with to train your dog and you're not doing these long line walks, I highly suggest you do so. So as you can see with Magnus's body language here, he's slow, he's taking his time, he's sniffing things, and this is a walk for him, not a walk for me. And a lot of people don't give their dogs a walk for them. I'm paying attention to his body language. I'm going where he's going. I'm not letting him hit the line very hard. Now, if I did want to stop him going forward, I can slowly add pressure as he's walking to the leash until it gets to a softer stop. And that prevents a really hard stop. So you see, I stopped him there. Magnus, good boy! And what I just gave him was not a treat. What I gave him was part of his breakfast. I have all two cups of his morning meal in here with me, and I'm using this throughout our walk. Will he always wanna be eating throughout our walk? No, he's gonna to wanna to be sniffing and smelling and doing things. Good boy. Now, before starting a long line walk, nice. You should really, I'm gonna get my clicker out so you guys aren't hearing my voice so much. <laughs> <laughs> you should really have your dog at least know some basics about coming and some leash manners. I'm noticing what he's getting distracted by. I'm going to see if he's either going to choose to go away from me or offer eye contact. Let's see what he does. Wow, what was that? He was really sniffing the air. There's a lot of wind going on. Oh, that's so nice. So you see, I didn't ask for anything. I didn't ask for a cue. Good job, mister. But he's cueing on me. All right, so I don't want to stay here all day. I want to keep continuing our, our walk. And there's a dog that barked there. I'll show you guys if we pass up any people and dogs, how to manage those interactions when you're on a long line. Let's go. Good boy. So you may notice he's hanging around. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so he was hanging around me a bit as we were walking over and I was reinforcing him for that because I like that behavior. But I also like when he goes to sniff and I actually have a separate cue to go sniff. So while he is still within my heel, if I'm working my timing well, I tell my dog, go sniff and they're able to go out and go sniff, all right? And of course, it's not gonna be perfect when you're first starting this. Your dog's gonna go off and do whatever they want. And again, this is a walk for them. This is not a walk for you. <laughs> I'm wondering, Caitlin, how can I use this really long line and not get tangled up in it? Well, it takes practice. So I still occasionally get tangled up in this. However, you're noticing the way that I'm using this I'm actually letting it go as he gets farther and farther away. Magnus, touch. <laughs> and that'll happen with your dog too. They might want to play chase and say, hey, come after me. And I'm, I'm saying, no, I don't, I don't want to come after you, right? We're here to sniff, we're here to have fun, but I'm not going to chase you. That's not a behavior that I want to see from my dog unless I am actively in control of that situation. So 
the long line, as you can notice right now, what happened? He ran and there's a whole bunch on the ground. Well, as soon as it gets to be loose like this, you want to pull it back up with a full arm's length. So you see how I'm doing it to my full arm's length? And you want to walk closer to your dog as you're doing it. And as they leave, let it fall out. Let your hands open up a little bit and let them go. And call them back before they get to the end. Magnus! <laughs> he found a leaf and now it's playtime. Very typical puppy behavior. So I'm going to keep rolling this up as I get closer to him. And I'm going to, let, I'm going to give him a treat when I get there. Let him know I'm not chasing you. I just want to give you a treat. And if he runs away, well, I can try calling him over. We'll see what happens there. Magnus! He stopped. He thought about it. <laughs> that puppy pouncing is the cutest thing. So I'm going to get into his view. Magnus! Play. And for a young puppy, this is extremely important because as they're doing this, this is, they're experiencing the world. They're experiencing the environment. They are learning muscle and eye coordination. They are learning and they are building up those muscles as for development. And they're using their nose and they're using their mouth to experience the world. So for a puppy, this is fine, right? Even if it's an older dog, maybe they never got out to experience the world. I'm not tugging him. I am letting my thumb add in a little bit of pressure, letting him know he can't go any further because I don't want him bolting off if I'm saying, okay, this is the max amount of distance you can go right now. Good boy, come on, let's wait. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> He's like, I'm coming and he found something else. Again, very puppy behavior. So I added that pressure and he, you see how he stopped. Come on, Magnus, let's go. So this is a very non-typical walk for Magnus. He's usually all about the sniffs and today he's all about the play, which I haven't seen from him before. So let, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how this goes. I have a nice. He looked at me, so I'm marking. Let's go. So we'll see how this goes. And I think as time goes on, he is becoming much more comfortable in his environment. He was actually born at the start of COVID and he didn't get the best socialization that I would have hoped for. So taking him out, I've been taking him out at least three times a day, going to parks, meeting things, checking out stuff. Now, when a dog starts to go around a bush or around a tree, I do slowly stop the line to let them know they can't go anymore. I'm not into constantly untangling my dog. Magnus. Nice. I'm not into constantly untangling my dog from these situations. It's not my cup of tea and you can just feel free to slowly stop your long line for that as well. And what you'll notice too is if you're a good trainer, your dog will naturally come back to you. If you're a trainer that uses more punitive methods, your dog may not want to come back to you. <laughs> so enjoy and cherish, cherish these moments with your dog because this is about building a relationship with them and having them, the, ha them having the desire to be with you. If your dog's constantly running away from you, your dog doesn't want to be with you. So start by repairing the relationship with some of these walks that are made for them. Okay. There we go. And this isn't the first time we got stuck around this particular tree. Magnus, free. So it probably has something to do with the setup. So he is showing a lot of interest going into the weeds today. And again, like this is an abnormal day. He doesn't normally do that. So I'm going to prevent him from doing that because it's tick season out here. And I'm going to add that tension and have a hard stop 
as soon as he reaches the end or the beginning of those weeds. So I don't want to be pulling any ticks off of this puppy any more than what is already gonna happen. <laughs> he is just enjoying life this morning. This is definitely a very unstructured, well, it is a structured training walk, but you know, again, it's, it's a different day for him and he's much more playful today. So if I continue seeing this behavior in future walks, what I'm actually gonna start doing is bringing along balls and toys. Magnus! So guys, did you see that body language? What I've been saying earlier about him picking up clumps of grass, him picking up these random leaves and playing with them. He's in a very playful mood this morning. So, you know, I'm not prepared for that. I should have had toys, but I haven't, from the past behavior that I've seen from this dog, I haven't seen any indication that he has been interested in playing. So I haven't brought those toys with me. But in the future, you know, we actually have some in the car. We could go out and grab those. But in the future, I'm definitely gonna have some toys on me because he is showing a lot of play behavior, running towards me, playing with the grass. And that's gonna be a very valuable reinforcer. <laughs> very nice, out here. So again, I didn't cue for this, right? He just decided, hey, I wanna start working. I like our relationship that we have. Let's keep doing this. <laughs> Which again, this is the most reinforcing part of having a dog, a dog that chooses and wants to work with you. It's absolutely amazing. And it's the best part of owning a dog. Did you see that? He wanted to play with that leaf. He looked away and he came back to me. This is what I'm talking about. Your dog should automatically be doing these behaviors. And again, this is a puppy that just turned 16 weeks old, guys. This is a puppy that just turned 16 weeks old and he's already offering all these behaviors. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Magnus, I'll trade. Thank you. Oh, can't drop that kibble. Can't have that for free, mister. All right, well, we've got, you want this? Oh, does he ever, guys, look at that body language. All right, so he's manding really nice for me. Yeah, oh my goodness, he's so toy motivated. I didn't know this about you, you ready? Free. What, what happened to it? Where'd it go? Go find it. <laughs> go find it. Come on, where'd it go? Go get it. There we go. Shorter toss seems to work. <laughs> Look how proud he is of that. Oh my gosh. You can only go so far, mister. I don't let him have it. He can play with it. I don't like how his leg's a little tangled in the line, but I'm sure if I get closer, he'll probably start running and playing chase me. So I'll just let him chill. I'll let him have it. And we might be here for a few minutes. <laughs> do you want this? I bet you do. Do you want this? <laughs> All right. Can you lay? Good job. Now, once you start moving into play with your dog, having a line already long like this is preferable. I already know he's gonna be running out. And if he wants to stay that distance, he can. Come on, let's go. Nice. Nice. We found a bunch more sticks for Mr. Magnus here. He likes to tear them up, chew them up, and keep going. And it looks like it's a stick day. But this is a good time um, 
since he is keeping a lot of distance from me, he's letting me know that he doesn't want me near his stick. So this could be a good time to start practicing giving him a treat as soon as I get there <laughs> and handing him another stick while I take the current one. So I'll keep my hand out open first. And I'll wait. And you know what he's saying? You know what? Your, your kibble, this morning's breakfast, isn't as reinforcing as this stick. <laughs> and that's life as a puppy. What can I tell you? So I'm going to see what he thinks if I offer him a different one. Do you want this? Do you want another one? <gasps> Go get it. And we can play this game of trade. Do you want this one? <laughs> He's like, no, nah, no, nah, this one's still too new for me to want to give it up. Go get it. So now I can start approaching him. Hopefully he won't run away. Do you want it? Go get it. Where'd it go? Go find it. So I already picked up the other one. There it is. There we go. And I always want to follow it up with a reinforcer. So these sticks are highly reinforcing to Magnus right now. Do you want one? Do you want it? So now he's really learning. Oh, he took the other one with him that time. Ideally over time, I would like to see him not run so far away from me because he, he is afraid I'm going to take it. Do you want a stick? Go get it. And then I can pick up the other one. And this is just, you know, again, wasn't planning on doing this today, but this is, you know, you work with what you and your dog have. Oh, and he found a feather now. Apparently that's really reinforcing. Totally, he was totally into that feather. So I just picked this up without him noticing. Do you want another stick? So this time he hasn't moved away from me at all, which is good. That's what I like to see. You ready? You ready? And I make sure to move it a little bit erratically so that he's more likely to chase it. And then I can pick up his stick. Because chewing should be good, but chasing, chasing should be better. Go get it. You want it? Free. Now this is a game. I'm happy with this. Where'd it go? I see it. Did you want this? Did you want it? Good boy. Is this what you want to do all day? Uh, is this what you want to do this morning before we start working? Yeah? Okay. So training doesn't always end up as expected, especially when you're in a large open environment like this. And with Magnus, he just turned four months old, not just two days ago. And he seems to have discovered that he can put the world in his mouth today. So this gives me fantastic information for our future outings. I'm going to be more prepared with chewy items and things that he finds reinforcing to put into his mouth. And we're just going to stay out here and chill until he's good, satisfied. And then we'll go out and do our regular normal training sessions with, you know, our good old normal collar for a service dog work. So that's a wrap guys, you know, gotta stay flexible with you and your animal and they're a puppy, right? In the end, this is a puppy and you have to go at their speed because you don't want them to learn not to enjoy being with you. And in the end, preserving the relationship is the most important part of training your dog. And that's all I have for you.